I've been here for almost uh, coming to three months. It's very, very different, but also very refreshing because um, to know that Singapore used to look like this and feel like this and to be transported back in time, even though we're in like, what, 2020 now? Once in a while, it's nice to slow down. Quite honestly, I don't know about everyone else, but I love it because I really love the Kampong lifestyle. It just feels very authentic. And I just want to add that because it's so authentic, it really helps us get into like, possibly how Singapore was really like in the 60s where things were not like wow so kind of like stressful and like everything is so high up in the air. It's amazing uh, to be able to, to, to look at everything, experience everything from the set design to the, to the attire to the looks. It's very um, heartwarming. My first overseas project after a good maybe 10 to 15 years. So I, I would say it's a good break away from family. <laughs> But yet, um, it's a very tight schedule for me in Nepal. So I, I had a couple of um, flying in and out on the same day. I am playing Un Acham, Madam Un. She became a star, a Wayang star. Everyone knew about her. Life wasn't very fair to her, but in the end, she came out strong. I'm excited because this is a very good story. When I first read the script, I cried. And when I first met Madam Un, there was so much respect for her. So we did have classes. It's not sufficient because people actually spend 10 years to master the art of Wayang. Apart from just being an actor, I'm also invited to be the artistic consultant for this drama series. So sometimes on set, the director will just, Hey Nick, can you please come here and choreograph this scene? Hey Nick, please come here and teach them how to fight. Hey Nick, come here and teach them how to sing. It has been a learning journey for me as well because I've never been a creative consultant on set before. This is the original Street Opera Troupe and in Singapore we still have it right now but we don't use wooden boxes anymore because wooden boxes are very heavy. We used to have it in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And these are the actors opera boxes. So the opera artist will just sit here and face the mirror and paint their face. For Chinese opera we have four main roles. These are the female roles. Xiao Tan. This for the soldier. And this is the warrior. This is the war headgear as well. We actually went to watch Nick's show, Nick's Troupe. It was so enlightening because I've never watched one before. You know, it's, it's a dying art and at the same time, these uh, aunties and uncles, they are still so passionate about it. They literally just sit there for an hour, do their own makeup. No one helps them with anything. They do everything themselves, which is amazing because I can't even put this together. My first ever theatre show was Tito Tao in 2007. This time I'm also writing two episodes, episode 9 and 10. I think her story as an artist is so important to Singapore uh, audience. Acham's character, the way we developed it, she takes every day as one small step and she finds a silver lining in every single event. I hope when everyone watch the drama, they would take that as a life lesson. I feel that Chinese opera is not just about a performance. It's also about values in life, about education, and so much we can learn from history. And I hope that through this Tito Tao drama, you will be able to encourage our younger generation to appreciate this Chinese art and also to learn more about the values in life. It's really heartwarming and you'll learn about the art of Wayang, about the dying art of Wayang, and you will learn to love it. It's life. The moon will appear after the cloud passes. Good things happen after the bad things pass.